This video shows how to create a duct system using the tabular manual D duct size window in RHVAC. This project already has all the room and system data defined. The rooms are the same as the ones in the sample RHVAC 9 project that is installed with RHVAC. Click the tabular manual D duct size button in the toolbar of the main window. No ducts have been defined yet. First, we'll create a main trunk for the supply and then we'll create other ducts under it. Right click the supply arrow node to display the pop up menu. Click Add Trunk. Now that a duct is selected, let's take a look at the two grids on the right. The center grid shows the properties of the selected duct, while the right side grid shows the fittings assigned to the duct. The length of trunk ST100 is 2.5 feet, so click in the value column for the length property and enter 2.5 for the length. Notice that the evaluation window says that there is a fatal error. It's normal for these errors to be shown before you're finished defining all your ducts, so just ignore these errors for now. Now let's create a runout that branches off the main trunk. Right click on ST100 to show the pop up menu. Click Add Runout. Enter 8.5 feet for this runout's length property. Click the drop down help button for the room property to display the list of rooms defined in System 1. Runout SR100 will feed the kitchen. This time we'll add a trunk underneath ST100 and assign it a length of 5 feet. Click Add Trunk. Under ST110 we'll add two trunks. One will be 7 feet long, the other 9.5 feet. Under ST120, we'll add two runouts that both feed the living room. Trunk ST130 feeds two runouts in the bedroom. Now let's add our return main trunk. And now we'll add our one return runout. Now we need to assign fittings to each duct in order to let the program calculate the pressure losses of the duct system. We'll start with ST100 and work our way down. In the right side grid, click the Add button. Now select the 1-C fitting. Now let's repeat that procedure for the rest of the ducts. First, we have to select the proper group. And now select the 9A-1 fitting. If the same fitting occurs multiple times for one duct, you can use the quantity property to account for all the occurrences. This 90 degree flex duct bend occurs two times in the current duct. Earlier, we selected the 9-A1 fitting for the round takeoff. The word branch in the description means that it was for the angled outlet. 
This time, we need to select the 9-A2 fitting, which is for the straight outlet of the same fitting. Notice the word main. Notice that the equivalent length is much lower for the straight outlet. Now we'll skip ahead to a point where we have already entered the fittings for the rest of the supply ducts. For the return main trunk, we need to select a fitting from group 5. The supply runouts in this project are all flex duct, so we need to change the material property. Click Flexible Duct. To save time, we can change the material property for the rest of the runouts by clicking Defaults. Check the Include boxes for material and material roughness. Now select Flexible Duct for both properties. Now check the box for each supply runout. By default, they each begin with SR. And now click Apply to Check Items. We can see that each supply runout is now set to Flex Duck. Now let's click the System node and set its properties. Here we can enter values for various device pressure losses. With all losses accounted for, we can see that the total static pressure loss that the fan needs to overcome is 0 0.477 inches water gauge. Now let's assume that we've selected a fan that has an external static pressure of 0 0.5 inches water gauge at the desired CFM. So we'll enter 0 0.5 for the fan external static pressure property. Now let's open the system data window and link the duct surface areas from these ducts we've created to the duct load factors for the system. Click the button beside the duct load factors input. And click the button beside the update SA from TMDD input. Now select TMDD from the list. Click select reports to see the results. Select each of the tabular manual D duct size reports. This report shows the same grid from the left hand side of the input window. To change the selection of columns of data shown to the right of each duct, you can click the layout button on the tabular manual D duct size window. This report gives a lot of detail about each duct. The summary section shows important data about the system. The pressure changes graph shows you the static pressure available at each point along the route with the highest static pressure loss. The bottom line shows the static pressure available, while the top line shows the total pressure. Static pressure available plus velocity pressure. Thanks for watching.